the debate of whether to use raw SQL queries inside of your code base versus using some sort of ORM is a long one. We've been arguing about this for a very long time and developers have opinions that exist on all sides of the spectrum. Some people only write raw SQL code. Some people only like to write ORM code. But with this new feature called Type SQL that was released by Prisma, they're promising that you can have the best of both worlds where essentially you can write your SQL code in its own dedicated SQL file. And whenever you run Prisma Generate, it will generate typed functions that you can use inside of your codes. And so with this new feature, they're promising a better developer experience for those scenarios where you actually do need to drop down to raw SQL code. So in this video, I'll show you how we can generate these queries, some of the features, and also some of the limitations. If that sounds good to you, let's dive in. My name is CJ, welcome to Syntax. Now, this feature was added in version 5.19.0 of Prisma, so you need to at least be using that version to be able to use these features. And all of the examples I'm going to be showing today are with Postgres, but they also support MySQL and SQLite. And if you haven't seen it, check out episode 839 of Syntax, where one of the co-creators of Prisma, Soren, was on the podcast with Wes and Scott, where he talked about this new feature, but also a lot of other things. This is a really great conversation. They talked about GraphQL, they dove into serverless databases and hosting. It's a really fun exploration of the world of, of SQL and a, and a cool conversation to listen to. So definitely check it out if you haven't heard it yet. So for our examples here, I built a simple little blog that has posts from all of the syntax hosts. And we specifically have a page here that lists out the users, but also displays the number of posts that each user has. So if we look at the code for this, I've actually written a raw SQL query. So I'm selecting all the fields that I need, but I'm actually aggregating the total number of posts for each user and then grouping by ID. And so this gives me the data that I need, but it's actually of the unknown type because there's no way to actually infer the types of this raw query here. And if you see my codes, you can see that TypeScript is complaining. It's like, hey, that's the unknown type. And then inside this map here, users is the any type. Now, of course, the codes still work because it is giving me back an array and these properties do exist here, but this isn't the best workflow. Now you could define your own type. I could go in here and say, yeah, we're getting back an array of objects. Each one of those has these properties like this. And now TypeScript should be happy, right? If I go down here, it's like, all right, well, yeah, I know that's an array with objects inside of it. And yeah, I know that these properties exist. Great. But the types could lie, right? What if we go in and we change our query, right? What if I actually remove the email field from querying here? TypeScript doesn't know about that. We told TypeScript what the type would be exactly. So it's like, yeah, of course there's an email field. But if we go back to the page and refresh, that email field isn't coming across anymore. So this is one of the main issues of writing raw SQL code and potentially trying to keep that in sync with your types. But now with Prisma Type SQL, we have a much better way to keep our types in sync with our queries. So here in my Prisma folder, if we look at our schema file, you can see that I've enabled the Type SQL feature here under Preview Features. And then we can create a folder inside of our Prisma folder called SQL and then define our queries inside of here. So I have this query, it's called get users with post count. It's the exact same query as you saw in my codes, but now we can actually generate types for this. So from the command line, if I do Prisma generate and pass in dash dash SQL, it's gonna see those SQL files and actually generate typed functions for us. And now to use it, I can import those typed functions from Prisma client SQL. And you can see all of the SQL files I've defined are inside of there. I specifically want the get users with post count function. And now instead of writing a raw query, we can use our typed function. So the way to do this is we say Prisma dot query raw typed, and then we can pass in the invocation of our typed function. But now the types are flowing through. We can see that this is an array. TypeScript is happy. It knows what that user object is. It knows what the properties are. Everything's awesome. So if we head back over here and then refresh, we get the data back and it works as expected. But now if I update that query, our types are gonna stay in sync. So if we head back over to that SQL file and let's say I did remove the email field, we will need to regenerate the types, uh, but they do support a dash dash watch option. So now anytime our SQL files change, it's automatically gonna regenerate those types. So I removed the email field. If we head back over to where we're querying it, I would expect a type error whenever we're trying to access that email property. Now for my use cases, I actually have to restart the TypeScript server because you can see that it's not actually picking up that latest type. But in VS Code, if I restart the TypeScript server, those latest types flow through. And now we can see that we get a type error that says, hey, that email does not exist. And so this is one of the great things about using type SQL here is now our types are gonna stay in sync with our queries. Now they also support arguments. So let's say I'm pulling in the post count from the query string and I only wanna show users who have more posts than the specified post count. 
we can update our query to say having greater than that specific post count. And then I have a form here where the user can select their post count. And whenever they do, that'll resubmit the form, requery the data and load it accordingly. So by default, we have all the posts here. But if I pass in plus five, we only see the users that have more than five posts. And if I do plus six, we only see the users that have more than six posts. But how do we do this with type SQL? We just use parameterized queries. So here I have a SQL file, get users by post count. And now we have that having clause here so we can filter it down and you can see I'm using dollar sign one. And so whenever Prisma is generating these queries, it's going to see that argument there. It's also going to infer what the type is. And now our typed function that we bring in is going to know that it, we need to pass in an argument. And I have Prisma generate with the watch flag. So the type should have been updated. I'm just going to restart my TypeScript server. And now I should be able to bring in get users by post count. And then in our method here, we can say Prisma dot query raw typed and then pass in the call to that function. But you'll notice we get a type error. It's expecting us to pass in a number so we can actually pass in that post count there. And so now if I refresh the page, it's using that typed query function, but we're able to actually pass in arguments. Now there's some annotations you can add inside of your SQL files if the generated types aren't exactly what you're expecting. So for instance, you can specify the type of the arguments. You can give them a name so that way you have good type completion. And once you specify these comments, those will be used when generating the types. In terms of limitations, they support MySQL, Postgres, and SQLite. Because this is based on SQL, you can't use this with MongoDB. And then the other thing is, whenever we're generating the types, we actually have to have an active database running to be able to do that. And so locally, I actually have a Docker container running. So if I kill the Docker container and then try to generate the types, we're going to get an error because it actually needs that connection so it can do queries in order to actually infer the types. And then the other thing is they don't support dynamic SQL queries. So you can see in this example, we are dynamically selecting the columns based on like an actual string in our, our code here. You can't do that with uh, type SQL queries. Now, Prisma does mention that this was heavily inspired by PG typed and then also SQL X. I haven't used either of these, but it is cool to know there are other solutions out there for actually generating typed SQL queries. Now, this is still a preview feature. So if you search the Prisma repo for issues that have type SQL in the name, you can see that some various feature requests and bugs are popping up. And specifically one that I ran into deals with having JSON selects inside of your query. So if you ever want to do any sort of JSON aggregation or JSON building or array building, these types are not automatically inferred. So I was testing this out in a database that has a bunch of information about restaurants and menu items and orders. And essentially, I wanted to do some aggregation. So I want to get all menu items, but then each menu item should have a nested object called restaurant. That's all the restaurant info. And then it should also have a nested item called category, which is all the category info. So this is a pretty complex uh, SQL query here that I attempted to generate type SQL for. And if you look at the generated type, you can see here for those nested JSON objects, it has a type of JSON value. And so when you're trying to access these nested properties here, the types aren't automatically inferred. So that's a limitation right now. Hopefully they'll implement that in the future. And so this will be really nice for when you're doing more complex JSON aggregations like in, in Postgres queries. So that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you tried type SQL. Do you like it? Is this something that you're going to start using in your code base as well? And if you like this video, don't forget to like. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. All right, I'll see you in the next one.